once upon a time. But hey, that time is today. There was a boy, and his name was, you guessed it, Thomas. And his favorite sport in the whole wide world was basketball. The best thing about basketball to Thomas was that it was a very bouncy ball, and Thomas just ate that stuff up. Because, like, he had played with soccer balls before, and he did the baseball once, but when you slammed the basketball just right on the court, it went so high in the air. So Thomas decided his plan would be twofold. One, join the NBA. Two, in the middle of the big match to decide an annual winner, they should come up with a name for this event, he would win the whole game by first slamming the ball onto the court and having it bounce up into the basket. This was his dream, and he lived for it. So, Thomas started training every day. He worked so, so hard. He would dribble the ball, and he would do other training too, but mostly dribbled the ball. One day, while training at dusk in a run-down Chicago neighborhood, an old man approached, wearing a cloak, and asked Thomas if he could hold the ball. Thomas was a polite boy and said, yes, sir, because Thomas only ever said, sir. When Thomas handed the ball to the old man, the old man revealed that he was none other than Michael K. Jordan. Editor's note, not sure what Michael Jordan's middle name or initial is, but K sounds great. So Thomas was capital S shook with three O's. Michael K. Jordan took the ball and breathed slowly on it. Thomas was confused at first, but then understood exactly what was happening. This was the whisper technique that Thomas had dreamed about, but also what won Michael K. Jordan the 1994 championship for the Bulls. As Michael K. Jordan continued to slowly breathe on the ball, Thomas could see the ball becoming redder and redder. Michael K. Jordan slowly whispered, It burns, but the burn is very good, Thomas. Thomas was only beginning to learn about the good burn. That's what the other special NBA All-Stars who could do the technique called it, the good burn. Michael K. Jordan stopped breathing on the ball. It was as red as the sun and as beautiful as a perfect gem. Michael K. Jordan looked up at Thomas and said, do you know why I am here, Thomas? No, sir, Thomas said. I also don't know how you know my name. Well, Michael K. Jordan continued, I know your name because you have been chosen. I am here to teach you the ways of the good burn. Thomas audibly gasped, and not in the normal annoying way, but this time with the full fervor and might of a gentleman a gentleman that had just been admitted on a really nice first-class flight for free, or something like that. Michael K. Jordan slowly handed the ball to Thomas. It's so hot, it... Burns. Michael K. Jordan finished his sentence. Now I want you to blow on it, Thomas. Fan the flames of b-ball. Thomas started to blow, but Michael K. Jordan immediately cut him off. No! It's within you. Breathe deep. Thomas. Thomas knew exactly what he meant. He had been trying to be all macho and cool in front of legendary superstar NBA warrior Michael K. Jordan. This was the same guy who went up against three different teams by himself at the finals in 1996 and won it all. So he took a few seconds for himself. Then, with a very impassioned thought in his heart, he inhaled. Harder than he had ever inhaled, prior to that. Yes. You're doing good. You're going to do it. You're going to breathe the good burn onto the basketball, said Michael K. Jordan. Thomas breathed out, and the ball became even hotter and redder than when Michael K. Jordan did it. I, I, I'm doing the good burn. I can do it, Michael K. Jordan, Thomas exclaimed. But not in the normal, annoying way he exclaimed things. This was more sincere, and you could tell he was truly astonished. Michael K. Jordan smiled a special smile. It is done. 
the prophecy shall be fulfilled. You can breathe it hotter and redder because you are the chosen one, Thomas. And now it is time for me to go. With that, there was a loud and bright flash of thunder and lightning. Crash! A bolt struck Michael K. Jordan where he stood, and he was instantly vaporized. Oh no! Michael K. Jordan! Thomas exclaimed in that still not quite annoying exclamation, though it was definitely starting to lean into the annoying a little bit more again. From the vaporized pile, there was only a cloak and some sort of paper under the cloak. Thomas approached it, lifted the cloak, and discovered... Oh my God. This is a contract to join the Chicago Bulls. I'm in. He knew. Thomas was overjoyed. Thomas leapt into the air to celebrate and realize something. He could jump higher. Oh my goodness, what is happening, Thomas thought. But then, it all clicked. Michael K. Jordan had passed his own power along to Thomas, and he knew that Thomas would need it for that second goal, but he believed in him. Thomas went home that night and had a very, very nice lasagna. It was the nicest lasagna he had ever had. The next morning, he called up Carl Gretchens, head of the NBA sign-up process. Hello, is this Mr. Gretchens? Thomas asked sheepishly. Yes, but please, if you're calling because of a contract, then we are friends. So please call me Big Ball, said the voice on the other end. Okay, Mr. Big Ball, sir, Thomas continued. I have a contract here to join the Chicago Bulls. I want to be a part of the National Basketball of America. I'm ready. Big Ball could feel the energy through the phone line. It's him he muttered under his breath. I'm sorry, did you say something? Thomas replied. No, no, just a bit of a cough, my boy. And you said your name is... Thomas, was it? Big Bo asked. Well, no, I hadn't yet said my name. Thomas was then interrupted. Great, great. Well, Thomas, it's good to have you joining the NBA. We are thrilled to add you to our collection of players. Your first game will be tomorrow at 6 p.m. sharp. You have to battle the Charlotte Hornets. See you on the court. Then Big Ball hung up. That was strange, thought Thomas. But regardless, he was ready. He had been training for a long time. Plus, the best player of all time had taught him a special technique and got all vaporized and stuff. He was probably as ready as he was going to be. The next day, he headed down to the Slam Jam Jamboree Coliseum, but everyone just called it the Slam for short. He arrived at 5.55 p.m. early as usual because he was always punctual. He met his teammates who all respected him because they knew Michael K. Jordan and, he, and knew he wouldn't lie about prophecy like Dennis Rodman had. Editor's note, this is another book, maybe someday. So Thomas got in his special Bulls outfit and went onto the court with his teammates. But he noticed they were just a little down. He tried to cheer them up by making funny faces at them during the game, but it only worked about 40% of the time. Thomas was crying a little bit inside. At halftime, it was a tie game, and Thomas came into the special rest zone with his teammates to discuss the game so far. We're doing really good out there, and I'm making some funny faces at you guys, but you all look very sad. What's going on? asked Thomas. One of his teammates, a 7'3 center named Ernie, came forward. The guys are all too nervous to say it, but he choked up. Thomas... We're not going to win this one. We're just not. Thomas looked around as everyone simultaneously broke into tears. But, but why? We can win. It's a tie game and Michael K. Jordan believed in me, Thomas said. Ernie took a long sigh. It's, it's just not enough. Thomas, have you seen who the coach for the Charlotte Hornets is, Thomas? Thomas realized he hadn't. Oh my God. Thomas muttered. The coach of the Charlotte Hornets was none other than Carl Gretchens, head of the NBA sign-up process, Big Ball himself. Wait, Thomas continued. That, isn't that illegal? I don't know. That, that seems illegal. Thomas was probably right, but he was a b-baller and didn't know anything about law. But he trusted in his heart that he was right. Listen, Thomas, Ernie started. We have all believed in you. Even before we met you just a little bit ago, we knew one day you'd show up, 
because Michael K. Jordan kept talking about you. But the truth is, it's bigger and more difficult than you ever imagined. Thomas stepped forward. No, it's not. Then he grabbed a basketball and started to breathe on it. Instantly, every eye in the room rolled. Thomas, that's not going to work here. We can all do the good burn technique. Thomas was saddened by his teammate's inability to see the special thing inside him that Michael K. Jordan could see. But he knew, and he knew he would show them. The next two quarters were brutal, and it was an extremely difficult battle. But finally, there was 10 seconds left on the clock in the fourth quarter. The game was tied. Thomas had come this far. Ernie looked over at Thomas, and Thomas looked over at Ernie. They both looked over at Big Ball, standing on the sidelines with a villainous smirk. Ernie shed a single tear, but Thomas looked determined. Thomas began to blow on the ball. It started to glow red. The audience started cheering wildly because they knew all about the good burn technique, as it was heavily marketed and people wore t-shirts about it and stuff. But just as the ball was glowing hot, something strange happened. The ball started to cool off. This was extremely confusing to Thomas because just like a day or two ago, he had learned this skill and felt at least semi-confident in it, but sure enough, the ball was cooling down. Thomas looked over to his teammate Ernie for guidance, but Ernie just looked away, shedding another equally sized tear on the opposite side of his face. Thomas looked all around the court for answers, with the cheers slowly fading away and turning to dreaded silence. Thomas hated silence. It was the one thing he hated more than anything in the world. Once, as a child, he had been accidentally left in a zoo. His family went home and forgot him, so he was at the zoo when they shut down. But the animals go to sleep too, so it was completely silent. And Thomas hated that. It had scarred him for life, and he knew what was happening. Oh no! My ability to play b-ball! I can remember the zoo! Oh, not the zoo! Thomas lamented loudly in the center court, about half annoyingly. Thomas could feel the tears dripping from his face onto the floor in front of him. Soon... Thomas had actually cried a lot, and there was a sizable puddle in front of him. As he opened his clearly red eyes and looked at the puddle before him, he saw a familiar face. Michael K. Jordan? Thomas couldn't believe it. He was looking at Michael K. Jordan's face in the puddle. But that's my reflection, Thomas said. It's because he's inside you now, Thomas, Ernie said. I didn't want to believe it. I didn't want to admit that this was possible, but I think you really can do this. Thomas had a renewed fervor inside of him. He could feel the ball heating up, and he wasn't even breathing on it yet. He was just like letting the normal flow of his nose onto it, so it was kind of nuts. Thomas got some angry eyebrows and knew exactly what he had to do. He took the biggest breath he had ever taken and blew and just kept blowing and blowing. The ball got hotter and redder and redder. He looked at the ball glowing bright and started to smile. I'm doing it. I can make this happen. Then, it wasn't getting so red. Thomas looked around and saw him, big ball. He wasn't just writhing his hands together like an evil villain, he was cheating. He had a mystical b-ball power too and was using it to fight against Thomas this entire time. No! I won't let him win, Thomas shouted. Ernie started cheering. Thomas, Thomas, Thomas. Soon, all of Thomas's teammates were cheering. Thomas, Thomas, Thomas. Then the entire stadium was screaming, Thomas, Thomas. Thomas looked over at Big Ball. He was nervous. He kept looking around and realizing that his plan was foiled. Thomas was stronger and much, much better at b-ball. Ernie whispered, it's time. And Thomas went into action. He ran forward as fast as he could go, which wasn't super fast, but that also wasn't his main thing, so it was fine, and approached the goal. Thomas could feel the power of Michael K. Jordan flowing through his veins as his feet left the ground. He soared higher and higher into the air until he became a little difficult to see, actually. Where has he gone? One woman in the crowd asked. At the apex of his jump, 
Thomas was just there, motionless, floating through the space that was the top of the stadium. He held a glowing red orb in his hand and looked to the heavens. Thank you, Michael K. Jordan, he whispered. You've truly made a boy's dream come true. Then, with all his might, he thrust the glowing red ball down to the earth with an incredible amount of force. It made a hissing sound as it broke the sound barrier, and the two closest sections of the stadium caught fire. No! Big Ball cried out as the ball came screaming down. And there it was. That all too familiar sound. The reason he got into this sport. The reason he loved the game. The bounce. People still talk about that bounce. They say it could be heard all the way in Texas. Several members of the Houston Jazz claim to have felt it in their bones. One member of the Houston Jazz became an immediate emotional mess and had visions of the bounce for weeks. It cracked so loudly that the basketball arena was split and debris went everywhere. Thomas was still mostly in the air, slowly descending. As the ball took flight again, Thomas had a brief concern. Had he got the angle just right? The bounce was perfect, sure, but would it bounce into the basket? He saw a vision of himself in that zoo once more. But this time, something was different. As he walked through the dark zoo and looked into all the cages, he didn't see animals. No, every animal had been replaced with Michael K. Jordan. He's here with me, Thomas thought. Even in my darkest time, Michael K. Jordan is here with me. That's right, a familiar voice spoke back. Who is that? Who's there? Thomas frantically asked. All at once, the animals in Thomas's vision walked forward. It's us. It's me. It's legendary b-ball superstar NBA man, Michael K. Jordan. And we're here to tell you something very important, Thomas. What? What's that, Michael K. Jordan? Thomas asked with a degree of uncertainty. You nailed it. Thomas opened his eyes. The vision immediately ended. As he looked below him, the ball was falling back to earth from the bounce, lined up perfectly, and it swished the basket as it dropped inside. I did it! Thomas exclaimed. He did it! Ernie and the fellow teammates exclaimed. No! No, this can't be! The screams of Big Ball rang throughout the stadium. As Thomas landed, he witnessed the man formerly known as Carl Gretchen slowly walking onto court full of fear. You couldn't stop me, Big Ball. I used the good bird and now I've done it. With one second to spare, I've won the game and also completed my bucket list. I'm a NBA superstar champion now. Thomas was overjoyed with excitement and pride. Big Ball looked at him with anger, then grabbed him by both arms and shook him. Don't you understand? You can't win. Everything has been held in balance. If you win, we all lose. Thomas's excitement slowly ended. Wh what are you talking about? Big Ball sighed loudly and turned around. Every planet has a guardian, Thomas. He turned around to face Thomas again. I am that guardian. I kept things in check from the power of good burn. Before you, there was only one who could wield the burn on that level. His name was Michael K. Jordan, and he fought desperately to destroy the fabric of society with every ball game he played. I had to join the NBA as a sign-up man, to be in on every game, to stop Jordan from wielding the good burn for evil. But now, now he will be set free. What did you call me? A voice rang out from the heavens. Oh no, he's here. Your perfect good burn shot has freed him, Thomas. It's over for all of us, Big Ball screamed. My name is Michael K. Jordan. Never just Jordan. The voice was pissed. Instantly, that very same lightning that had struck Michael K. Jordan before in front of Thomas blasted Big Ball. He was gone, and sadly, there was no NBA contract or MLB contract or anything. Thomas turned around and saw Michael K. Jordan descending from the skies, but his eyes were red, the same glowing red that Thomas had held in his hands moments ago. Oh my God. It was your power. I was charging your power, Thomas shouted at Michael K. Jordan. Yes! 
And now I'm free to conquer the world! Thomas felt alone. Thomas felt afraid. And suddenly Thomas was back in that zoo, but this time without a great NBA All-Star to help give him advice. I've got it, Thomas said to himself. I know the one way I can be them. I know the one way I can save the world. Thomas looked up at Michael K. Jordan, eyes still glowing red with evil. Michael K. Jordan, you've got all this power, that's true, but can you play b-ball? Do you dare challenge me to b-ball? I do. In fact, we'll make it simple. A three-point contest. That's all we'll need. Thomas said this with such confidence that Ernie looked confused, unsure of what Thomas was plotting. Thomas was weak. With the return of Michael K. Jordan, he could feel that the power once inside of him was gone. He was back to normal Thomas. And yet, he had an amazing amount of confidence inside him. And not the normal annoying confidence, this was different. One shot. That's what they each got. Thomas took his place at the three-point line and was handed a basketball. It didn't glow like before. It didn't even get warm. Thomas sighed. Well, I guess I can't do the good burn anymore. But if getting it from an evil entity is how I get it, then I don't even want it. And you know what? Thomas grinned. I don't need it. I just need my actual skill from my actual training. Dribble. 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 Thomas was nervous, but he knew what he had to do. He grasped the ball and lifted it above his head. His hands arched and his knees slightly bent. He took a small breath and popped slightly into the air before releasing the ball from his hands. It flew through the air gracefully before hitting the rim and bouncing straight up. The audience gasped, and as the ball came back down onto the rim, it spun around the circumference. Once twice, three times. Then, as it teetered dangerously on the edge of the rim, it rolled in. Thomas sank the shot. He was relieved, but he wasn't done yet. Michael K. Jordan got a chance to make the shot. Thomas stood to the side and Michael K. Jordan stepped up. He grabbed the ball and it was hotter than ever, so much hotter than Thomas's. Clearly Thomas had supercharged his abilities. Courtside Ernie cried out to Thomas, Thomas, why? Don't you know he's stronger than you, Thomas? Thomas looked back, with a grin on his face and certainly in his heart. I know, and then smiled even bigger. Michael K. Jordan lifted the ball above his head, the ball absolutely surging with power. As he lifted it up and felt it leave his hands, he suddenly realized the error of his ways, and why Thomas was smug beyond belief. He had become too strong. He couldn't contain his power. The precision necessary to accurately sink this three-pointer was impossible. As it left his hands, it soared like a rocket through the sky, completely missing the basket, then creating a huge crater in the side of the stadium. Michael K. Jordan couldn't do it. He couldn't make the shot. No! My b-ball skills! Don't you understand? Thomas started. You're too powerful. You claim to be the best legendary superstar NBA man, but you can't even make a single shot. You're a fraud, but worse, you're not Michael K. You're just... He paused. Jordan. No! Jordan screamed out, clearly distraught from losing to a novice who couldn't even do a good burn, but also because he caught fire and was definitely dying. Thomas wasn't sure how to help, so he just kind of let it happen. But he was evil, so he figured it was all right. Jordan slowly burned to a crisp and let out a very evil yelp right at the end. It appeared the demonic alien creature inside had finally been destroyed. Ernie ran to Thomas' side in tears. Thomas! Thomas, you did it! You're incredible! And you didn't even need the good burn. Thomas hugged him. Ernie, thank you for always being such a good teammate. It's been an incredible four quarters with you. Ernie hugged him back. Yes, yes, it really has. 
The stadium was in shambles, parts of it destroyed in the audience in a daze. But there was cheering, and there was a big smile on Thomas's face. Thomas let go of Ernie. In the midst of the crowd cheering, Ernie said, Well, champ, what are you going to do now? Like there'd be any other answer, Thomas paused. I'm going to get the best lasagna a legendary b-ball NBA man can get. The End <laughs>